Hi there. Hey, we're, we're here to see Betsy. Okay. Great. Awesome. Thanks so much. She's home. That's great. I just we stopped by last night. Yeah, we stopped by last night. You weren't around. There's so many gay lesson, like my first gay lesson, whatever. And he's like, but his biggest concern was the cats. Don't worry about the cats. Yeah. That's a justifiable concern. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This is really cool. If we didn't hear you for their cats, I would feel incredibly guilty. <laughs> it's like, damn, came over here to demand justice tonight. Look what we've done. Oh, no. <laughs> Have you seen the paper this morning? This, there you go. Right oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, everywhere. Why? <laughs> Front page. Oh, what's the headline? Sorry. Uh, Okay. You know what's funny? <laughs> I don't think they know. Yeah, I don't think they, they don't know. Twitter, it, said, yeah. like, it was funny because when Tyler posted it, and everybody's yeah. like, so now the, on, the dispute on Twitter is like, that's not his real son. <laughs> <laughs> it's his <laughs> illegitimate son. Uh, it's not his real son. It's your son. I know. Well, same. This, this, is actually, this is so real, though. This is actually an instance of saying Negro Nation. <laughs> 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 oh my god. And I think I think we really should be asking a lot of questions around the process and like oh. who because I don't know, does anybody in here know like how they determine um who is qualified to be an officer? Like who actually makes that decision? Where is that legislative action or um, where are they placed? Because I think it's really interesting how we never um there's never uh, a consequence for officers, right? Yeah. And if there would be, they would get a felony, which means that they can't have a gun, which is yeah. the whole reason why most of our people can't be in there, because a lot of us have felonies or backgrounds. So I think it's interesting that they never, ever give a consequence to the police. But if they did, we would find a lot of them couldn't hold guns either and be police officers. So mm -hmm. yeah. just trying to figure out who kind of who makes those decisions, and if they're not you know, people from our communities, then it's not equal, and it's not justice, and therefore inadequate, or whatever we want to call it. I just think the question is really important that we yeah, ask I agree. Um, it's, it's um, how this process and who's in charge of making these decisions. Because it wasn't clear yesterday who was in charge at all. Mm. So on the police side? Yeah. yeah. That's true. Yeah. No, I think the mayor has control. Yeah. I just don't that. believe it. I don't believe the mayor was. Okay, guys. No. Here she comes with about, like, five people. Uh, you guys, I have three in ten minutes, so... Hey, guys. Hi. Hi. Oh, great. <coughs> uh, welcome. Hello. Sir? Let's see you. Let's meet in here. I gotta go get some stuff. Hey. Take my hat off. That's the thing to do, right? Yeah. Stand. Got a little shelf that's under here. Uh, we stopped by last night to see if you were at home, but yeah, we weren't around. Yeah. But we had a great talk with Gary, and yeah. he was so courteous and respectful, and yes. it, was, it was really nice. And uh, we just figured you were probably going to be at work, um, so we stopped right here. Mm -hmm. um, Ashley, did you want to say anything? Why don't we do introductions first, so we know everybody, he and I are on the same page, so you guys know each other. I know Julie, I know Betty. Shanari, but hi. Shanari. I'm Sam. Yeah. Jeremiah. Jeremiah. This is Ben Hector, my deputy chief of staff. You are? My name is Matthew St. Germain. Oh, hi. And I'm Betsy. So, yes. Do you want me to read this first? Or? That's up to Ashley. Yeah, I mean, you can, if you can read it, but if you are facing it, you can be me. We should get really large paper with it.
a lot of us, um, I think all of us were at the fourth precinct yesterday, um, and we were incredibly concerned about what was happening, um, especially to young people um, that were there. Um, you know, seeing people be maced, um, and then seeing the lies that the police told about the macing on Twitter, um, when there was obviously evidence that, that they were macing people. Um, you know, we were incredibly concerned with the safety of people, and um, you know, the, the way that things would randomly escalate yesterday, uh, in a way that was meant to, I think, make people feel unsafe. Um, it just felt like a, you know, I, felt, I was standing there, you know, arm to arm with my friends, and worrying that one of us was going to get, you know, seriously injured or killed. And I just don't think our own police should ever make us feel like that. And I really, I hope that you will have some brave leadership that I, that I believe you have um, to stand up and say that it's not all right that police treat people like this you know, like true love of this, it's not okay that people are, are being killed by the police. Mm -hmm. um, and just to, to show your humanity yeah. that, and your concern for your citizens. And, and also with regards to last night, I think that one thing that just kept going through my mind was like, I kept reading that the purpose of this uh, kind of like eviction was for concern, concern regarding public safety. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, that, that, that mission was, that was, that was failed. Mm -hmm. That the attempt to be in a safe situation uh, drastically failed. It was, you know, what you had there was an encampment of a couple dozen people, and then, well, what escalated last night into several hundred people, people who were angry. Um, uh, and I think that when you get a group that big, people all often become angry for, at, at that point, angry for different reasons, you know, and I think that that was like the fact that you had police escalating the situation when everything I know about police officers, I've, as an artist, I've worked with uh, police officers. Um, who has, he, he's retired and he has his own kind of training program that's all about like, you know, uh, playing around the rules of de-escalation like, you know, for police. Uh, so I got to learn a lot about that when I was doing that project. Um, and it was weird doing that project with retired police officer and being like, man, none of this is my experience with police. None of these rules of de-escalation, I didn't even know they had a rule, like any <laughs> rules of de-escalation because this is not my experience with police. And again, last night, um, uh, that was not my experience with police. Um, there was no attempt to de-escalate the situation. Uh, there were kind of, there were there were seemingly random outbursts of violence by the police. Um, everything things just started to kind of calm down. You know, people were, you know, people who were on our, on our side who were getting angry were starting to get kind of calm down. People started getting back to chanting and then randomly crisis uh, being initiated by uh, by the police. Um, and so I kind of wondered about that, and I wondered like, okay, if this failed. In re relatively to what, what was going on at the precinct, um, you know, at what point is the responsibility of the people who made what I'm sure was a hard decision to tell police to go there to make the, I'm sure, even harder decision to uh, tell them to leave? And I know that doesn't really give you a whole lot of recourse to save face, but like, it it's kind of appears to me what, what needs to happen because um, the violence is unacceptable. To tell who to go? The police. So, um, that's kind of what that's kind of our request. We're not here to um, to uh, speak on behalf of the organizers of the fourth. We're not here to, um, uh, but we are here to speak on behalf of uh, myself as community member mm -hmm. growing up right around the corner from yeah. the fourth precinct uh, to say that uh, where I saw the escalation last night um, <clears throat> uh, was on the side of the police, and that I think that that is uh, you know the macing, the intimidation, the rubber bullet firing that stuff needs to cease. Um, but that also, um, uh, the, the police presence, at least in the way that it's being presented. Just another question, are the rubber bullets shooting the marking rounds? Uh, yeah. yeah, those giant green things. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you've seen the, uh, <laughs> the cover of this, the front page of the strip this morning, but there's a photo of uh, Jeremiah He's having a gigantic cannon pointed at him. I just part. wanted to be clear. Mm -hmm. I just, yeah, absolutely. If there were actually rubber bullets being used, I wanted to know. My, okay. My, to my knowledge, they weren't. And okay. There weren't any. Problems. So what are, what are those things made out of? They're called uh, they're paint. Basically. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. Well, yeah, I think that those things would it would be nice to not have those being yeah. fired yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or even just present. Understood. Uh, they. I understand that they're non-lethal weapons. They look like rocket launchers. No, yeah. no. <laughs> so. no, there was a lethal weapon on the roof. They, there was a red dot marked on many of us. 
So at some point I saw him turn the light off. So, but he was still up there. Um, and the police presence, look, I understand like it's a police precinct. Your, your response to that request might be, well, it's a police precinct, like what do you want us to do? Um, I think what we're asking is that uh, like, oh, also another, uh, another thing that the police kept telling us yesterday was that we need to clear this atrium. Well, the issue is not clear. It's packed full of cops with a barricade in front of it. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of appeared that on all fronts, at least to what was communicated to me, that the outcomes of the night were not accomplished on your end, on, on the city's end. Um, and so if they're not being accomplished, then I think that it's going to be on the city to, you know, tell their officers, like, the barricades need to come down. Mm -hmm. And and we need to, you need to show that you're willing to make some concessions before you're going to re-engage the community mm -hmm. and start really making those asks. I think it's really unfair to start making those asks while you still got people with those things in their hands, you still got barricades up, you still got uh, police officers, you know, holding their line. Yeah. Um, which is something I heard a lot yesterday. Well, I mean, even with how much trauma a lot of people in the city have with the police, <clears throat> I mean, my first experience in the hands of the police was them putting a native man in the back of a car and riding him around the car and peeing on him. I mean, with that level of trauma that so many of us have, like having this militarized police force and camouflage, uh, with helmets and goggles and you know semi-automatic weapons pointed at us, um, is that the face of what community policing looks like? Because I, I don't think it's congruent with what the expectations are supposed to be of our police force. What happened with Cam last night? Yeah, I mean, uh, Cam had uh, a loaded weapon pointed at him, and Lisa walked directly between the officer and Cam and said, "If you're going to shoot anybody, shoot me." And I think if uh, you know, I, it's, I, I have to be very blunt here. If a council, me if two council members can face down a loaded weapon and say, you have to, to an officer, you have to stand down from the safety of City Hall, it should be really easy for you to do the same. I just really want our city and your leadership to be a model. And, you know, we don't have to be perfect in this office model. We can do it differently. Mm -hmm. And I think you're in a moment where you can kind of show that. I mean, we're paying attention at Boise because we know the, you know, the city and our move toward racial equity. And this is an opportunity to show that. So. Yeah, I've referred to these sites probably for Yeah, let's and go there. I really would love for you to show up in all your identities, one as a sociologist, as a feminist, as a really funny, witty person, because those are things I think are resources to ask us a different way to look at this. It's a manufactured crisis with a very, very ultra-familiar template and narrative. It could be different. I think the wit might injure you. <laughs> I'm, I'm listening to what you're saying. Yeah. I was just- It would be a little joke. Just making a little joke. It'd be funny when you say it. There it is. But there are different frames. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I think we all know that it's a very difficult position in that anybody who's paying attention to anything knows that the police union is not necessarily uh, interested in collaborating or being in dialogue with anyone in this city. They have been highly adversarial. Um, and we know that puts you in a very difficult position, but you know we're here not as organizers, we're here as neighbors, and those are our neighbors who are getting hurt. And we don't need an occupying force in our city that scoffs at our concerns. Um, I think we all are here as individuals in concert saying we can we can have a much better city than this. I'd be interested in there not being so much a plan on both sides, you know. I'm sorry, can you hear me? I'd be interested in not seeing there being a plane of both sides, mm -hmm. you know. Of talking about like violence among community members being unacceptable and violence among police being unacceptable as a means of talking about like you know everybody needs to keep it cool um, when that's not really what's happening you know like it's not proportionately you know community members that are out there not keeping it cool yeah you know, it's just, yeah it's yeah. officers Absolutely. that are there that's escalating right. the situation you know and so whether or not there is a lethal weapon out there pointed at people. What you're seeing is technologies of fear. That's right. You know, so yeah. like you're seeing a manufacturing of fear, an escalation of a crowd that's mm -hmm. calculated. You know, yeah. and so like what I don't see is a unsuccessful um, evacuation of <clears throat> a vestibule. 
I see a successful right. and calculated manufacturing of fear and crap, mm -hmm. you know? And so I think identifying what the problem is in a decisive way is a part of how you build a different kind of trust, right. you know? Um, and, and I think that that's not necessarily really personally what I see politicians doing or even really necessarily the role of politicians. I don't really have a whole lot of faith in politics, you know, but in terms of, of an elected official that would want to transgress what the, I think, traditional role of elected officials is, I think that that is what needs to happen. You know, that, that you have to do the, the thing that is unpopular and difficult and, and doesn't, you know, place you in this moderate place of, of really kind of saying nothing, mm -hmm. you know, um, cause, cause that's what it ultimately feels like. And that nothing, that neutral thing is not benign. It's not even yeah. neutral, yeah, it goes yeah. you know? Yeah. So, I mean, the um, process itself is a process of damage, of killing. The process killed Jamar Clark, you know? The process of going by the book, by the investigation, is within a system that is infrastructurally okay. inequitable. Yeah, and I really want to echo what Sean was saying, that <clears throat> if you guys don't want to frame it as a failure, you can frame it as a success <laughs> of <a> fear <laughs> and intimidation yeah. into the community, yeah. mm -hmm. um, if, that's, if, that, if that's your goal. Um, but I do think that those are the two ways to, to frame it, and I think that Sean makes highly valid, you know, the paradigm of like community side, police side, doesn't really exist. Um, mm -hmm. There is a police side, <laughs> but you know, but that's like, but that, yeah, people, the community comes in, uh, is not uh, uniformly dressed, is not uniformly trained, is not uniformly, you know, so there's really not, that's, uh, that, that paradigm doesn't really exist. Mm -hmm. So I want to make sure I point that out. Mayor, what would you like to do? What would you like to do? Um, well, I mean, the, the first thing I want to say is um, I appreciate you coming. Um, frankly, I, I appreciate the fact that um, for me, uh, I think for everybody in the city, what's been ha what happened on Sunday and then what's been happening subsequent to Sunday um, is a devastating thing for the city. Any of us, any of us, myself included, um, that it's just painful and hard. Um, and so I just wanted to name that and put it on the table. Um, people are a little confused about whether or not, reflecting back to me, um, about whether or not I um, have any feelings about what's happening. And I assure you that I do. Um, and that uh, what I'm trying to do is make sure that um, we get through this as best we can. There's a few different things, I think, that have been addressed here. The, the situation about the shooting, uh, concerns about the shooting con and, the, and the investigation, concerns about the evacuation, concerns about how um, the situation last night was handled, and then long-term concerns about what we're going to do in the city, particularly regarding police-community relations. But also short-term concerns about <coughs> uh, how the fourth can be, how the, fourth, the situation in the fourth yes. can be diffused. Yes, yes, exactly. So um, I'll put that under the concerns about what happened last night. So yes, in between we can put what do we do from here, which is the thing I'd like to spend more, the most time talking about. Um, the shooting, um, was an awful thing, um, and remains an awful thing. And by the shooting, I mean Jamar Clark's death. Um, the best tool I have in the scope of my authority to do that, to deal with that, is to ask for the independent investigation and then let it be independent. Um, my interference, or even the shadow of a doubt about my interference in that investigation, I don't want there to be a shadow of a doubt about that investigation. Um, I don't want to inter interfere with it in any way because it's the tool that we have at our disposal. And it's what I was asked to do and was responsive to that request. Um, and I wanted to be responsive to that request. 
Um, but once the request is made, I, I want to honor it. And so I have no predetermination of the facts. I have no, um, until that, you know, until that investigation is concluded and we have the results, I have no um, predetermination of any of those facts, nor should I. I'm not going to interfere in the investigation, nor should I. Um, I want to maintain its integrity and I want it to be as thorough as possible. And I want to be very clear and put that on the table. That is why I said no to demanding the release of video, um, uh, because that would be give the appearance, at the very least, uh, of me trying to interfere with that investigation. So I've said no to that. Um, is there anything else about that part of things you want to talk about? What, what do you think the effects of releasing the video would be, other than, than you thinking it would seem like you were uh, somehow biased? Do you, do you feel like it would change the jury, it would incite people to be angrier, like, what, why not? What, what, what would the harm be? Right, one of the things that I can do is I can ask the FBI, I mean, I can, uh, you know, the FBI can say a little bit more, or the DCA can say a little bit more about why they are worried, why they are not releasing the video. Mm -hmm. um, and too much comment on my part about that might not be useful. I will mm -hmm. say um, that in my experience here at City Hall with other cases, um, certainly until you have found all the witnesses, you don't want anybody, you know, you don't want to taint this witness testimony by of having course. them view the video mm -hmm. until you have all the witnesses on camera. That's been my experience at City Hall investigation. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, um, I, you know, I can see what I can do about making sure that people, you know, that the principles of that, you know, investigation wise, um, get out. I have something to say just to Piggyback back on what you're saying, but I have something other than that to say, but I just wanted to, while we're on that subject of the camera, uh, somebody brought to my attention that there is a, I don't know, 13.82 comprehensive law enforcement data, criminal investigation data during the time when an investigation is active, any person may bring an action in the district court located in the county where the data are being maintained to authorize disclosure of investigative data. The court may order that all or part of the data relating to a particular investigation be released to the public or to the person bringing the action and make the determination as to whether investigative data shall be disclosed. The court shall consider whether the benefit to the person bringing the action or to the public outweighs any harm to the public, to the agency, or to any person identified in the data. The data in dispute shall be examined by the court in camera. And then there's this too. Subdivision 15 public benefit data. Any law enforcement agency may make any data classified as confidential or protected non public pursuant to subdivision 7 accessible to any person, agency, or public if the agency determines that the access will aid the law enforcement process, promote public safety, or dispel, dispel widespread rumor or unrest. Mm -hmm. So, what about these two laws do you know about, and how can we use those to? work for the community's sake. Right. So at this point, the disposition of the videos is not in my hands. You know, that's part of the independent investigation is getting that out of my hands, getting it out of the hands of the NPD is part of the reason to have the independent investigation. So the determination about the release of those videos is not in my hands. So can we use this? Is this something that we can use? Uh, I have no, I'm not an attorney, I have no idea sort of how that plays out. Really? Like that. <laughs> um, I'd like to talk to you about another, uh, another video um, that you could uh, look at. Um, Jamar Clark this summer was severely beaten by officers in the 4th Precinct. Um, he uh, had retained a lawyer who took his case and he was in the, in the process of suing the 4th when he was killed. Um, the fourth released a dash cam video that um, obscured the the attack. Mm -hmm. um, there was another car. We don't know who those officers were, and apparently that car has really good footage that's never been released. Those officers, whoever they are, no one knows who they are. We don't know if they were there on Sunday. Mm -hmm. I think that's really telling information. Mm -hmm. That's stuff that we could access, and we could see if maybe this altercation happened because he was sick and tired like apparently he told his lawyer 
of seeing this happen to black people all over the country, and that he wanted officers from the fort to be made an example of. Um, I would say since you're asking whether or not it's relevant to the case, that is great information to bring to the DCA and the FBI. Mm -hmm. um, I think in the interest of an independent investigation, you would want them to be the ones asking those questions and getting that information, mm -hmm. as opposed to having me do it or having yeah. the FBI do it. And I know the BCA phone number is 651-793-7000. Cool, we got it, okay. I want to be I want to be respectful of everyone's time, including the mayor's, and if we could just wrap up in about five minutes, and then I think the mayor has a few more points related to what you brought up earlier. Yeah. Um, oh, you're about to say something else. Well, I, you know, if we have limited time, you know, I'm, no, I'm here finished. to listen to you guys, but, you know. I mean, information is, is important. Yeah. Um, the other, um, I mean, the concerns about the evacuation last night. I could have done a better job getting this information out or repeating it, asking the NPD to repeat it, um, getting it out there. Uh, there were concerns about the vested rule. Um, people were in there for a few days. I mean, it was a public access issue for a few days, um, uh, which we were withstanding um, because, and I want to put this principle out there first, I want people to be able to gather at the fourth precinct. It is not my intention to have people not there, not have an opportunity to have a space um, of your choosing um, where you can come together, where people can come together um, to protest, to grieve, to be with one another, to ask questions, to ask questions of, you know, uh, uh, make how people feel known. Um, it's been expressed to me by folks who've been out there that it's useful for them from a healing standpoint, from a protest standpoint, whole nine yards, and I want people to be able to be out there. Um, the action yesterday um, was designed to, um, it, it was a public access issue, and it continued to be a public access issue. The egress in and out of the precinct is important. People need to be able to get in, officers need to be able to get out, and it was a safety, it became a safety issue. Folks covered up the cameras. The tarps that were attached to the building obscured visibility. Um, our understanding was, and I think this was borne out, uh, was that there was, you know, cooking implements in there. Uh, certainly, from a fire safety standpoint, that's an issue. So it was an issue of public safety and as well as public access. Um, and the inspector, uh, the chief was there. The inspector was there. Um, you know, the inspector went in to say, and a note he had to read, you know, he was going to read just saying, hey, we need you to clear the best of rule. The people who were in there left right away, which we appreciate. Um, in the course of doing that, and there was uh, a line, um, you know, holding that space, um, there was an altercation with the crowd. Um, it's not true. I mean, I was there, and I mean, and, and people were in the vestibule, and they were actually before he had even finished reading his statement, people were being shoved and and moved forcibly by the police officers. And there is video of that. that I hope you'll review. But I mean, I think we came to your house last night, really hoping to break through this shell, really hoping that we would see like the side of you that really cares on a human level about this. And I, I mean, you're kind of rep like repeating the press conferences, and I, I just. I, I don't know, like, it's hard to believe that you really care deeply about those people when you're just repeating the same things that you've said in press conferences. Okay. I know, I don't want to fight the because you brought up pain, right? Mm -hmm. You were saying everybody feels that way, and I can, I can believe that. I can believe you probably feel a lot of tension going on right now, and you should. There's only way anything's going to change is if you feel a little uncomfortable, right? Because right now I'm feeling uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. I feel it in my stomach. I feel like we're being raped over there, and you're telling us to wait for an investigation process that is designed by people who have historically traumatized us, mm -hmm. right? And I need you to feel what I'm feeling right now. And plenty of times I've given you the opportunity, I've pushed you very hard, and you probably think, you know, she doesn't like me, or she's trying to intimidate me or anything, but it's not even about that. 
right? It's about pushing you to go beyond what you're doing right now. Mm -hmm. Because you're supposed to be the different mayor, right? Everybody told me to vote for you, mm -hmm. and I just didn't believe that you were ready. I remember talking to you about the robots that police were using. You had no idea about it. Mm -hmm. But we know about these things. And I'm frustrated that every time community says something, it's not facts. It's not, it's not mm -hmm. uh, correct data. Mm -hmm. People are out here feeling murdered. We feel mm -hmm. that trauma. I, get, I watch people, police beat up people all the time, mm -hmm. okay? Remember that one time I was email, I was a messaging, Facebook messaging you and the chief of police? Those police came to my house nine deep over supposedly a domestic abuse call on my child, mm -hmm. right? They detained me, Betsy. They did, I'm, on, I'm on a board for the city, working for environmental justice. I work with you guys, mm -hmm. right? And nine white male police officers can just come into my house? Mm -hmm. And I don't know what they're gonna do to me and my kids, right? Mm -hmm. All based on a lie? Mm -hmm. But you guys can tell us that our truth is not true? So there's two things. Um, People who think I don't have feelings about what happened, I don't know how to convey feeling better or differently than I have. One of the best ways I've had my entire career to convey how I feel about the inequities in this city and this world is to work hard every single day to change them. Every single day I come in here. I ran for office so I could have a different set of tools than I had at my disposal to make the changes that needed making. I have been using those tools to the best of my ability every single day. That is one of the best ways I have to express how I feel about the inequities that we have in this world. If anybody doubts, if anybody doubts that I care about these issues, take a look at what I've been doing for the last 10 years. Take a look at what I've been doing for the last two years. If you doubt it, feel free. But by God, I give a damn. By God, I'm out there doing the work every single day to the best of my ability. I don't show emotion properly. Perhaps I don't show emotion the way people expect a woman to show emotion. You're not emotion. looking for emotion. I was, just told that I, didn't, I was just told that I did not show enough of a human reaction to what was going on. I think what, what's meant by that is that we, we do have, I, and I don't think it's unreasonable for you to ask people for, for them to, to, to release the barricade. I don't think it's unreasonable for you to admit publicly that that was that, that the that your attempts last night were either a success in instilling fear and intimidation or a failure to add to, to clear the atrium and provide public safety. I think that those are the things that are needed and I think that those things might be unpredictable. They might not be as like as calculated. They might not make you or Janae look good or, or blonde, uh, but like those, those are the things that need to happen and we're not, and look, we're community members, we, we're we all politically engaged. We know not to like rest all of our hopes and wishes on like uh, uh, the statements and actions of organizers or politicians. Mm -hmm. We know to just behave and have a, a wider scope in life than that. But this is, this is a material thing that you, that you can accomplish. And it's a contradiction. If the whole purpose was to open that up for public, First of all, it was never open for the public. I'm confused who we're talking about when we're talking about public safety. Whose safety are we talking about? Because I kept asking the man who was speaking to some uh, people, I guess he was in some sort of leadership. I'm confused whether who was in charge. I'm confused if you have any control over that police department, period, or the chief of police, because it doesn't seem like it. Because if these are the things that you put out there, you need to go back and figure out who made these different, um, who made these different points to, to change what you asked for, right? Because in the end, the door wasn't open for anybody from the beginning to walk in there and make a complaint. It's still not open and it's not gonna be open. So maybe you need to go over there and stand there and open the door yourself. They're actually escalating right now. We're just getting texts from people that mm -hmm. the police are picking things back up. So I mean, I think the way right now, we will leave after this, Ben Hecker. Um, the way to do it right now is to call the chief of police right now go back to your office and call her and ask her to protect people because people are being injured yesterday a 14 year old like he was dancing with his friends in the street before he was shot with one of those paint marker rounds and what does a marking round like really even mean marking him for what mm -hmm. like marking him for what does, is he is that 14 year old the next jamar mm -hmm. like so I, that, that's a we'll, we'll leave but i'm just asking you to go at, call she carto right now like and ask her to change change what's happening on the street before 
before uh, we, before you guys leave, before we stop talking, I guess the, the biggest thing I need to know, uh, or the or the thing that I'd like to talk about is what I mean. I hear I hear what you're asking for. Um, what is uh, how do I want to say it? Um, how we you know, as folks are out there, as folks are protesting, um, as we're doing what we can on our side to um, uh, have the interaction be as good as possible on our side, um, there are some things that would be useful, some specific things at the precinct that I think would help, that I could ask for. Are you open to hearing me ask for those things, or would that not help you? I want to say that I think as far as the request to, to end the violence at the precinct, that's what we're going to ask for. Absolutely. Anything else um, with regards to how the protesters are going to behave at the precinct mm -hmm. needs to be discussed with the, with the organizers yeah. on the ground there. And okay. so, and that's, um, uh, and that's certainly, you know, we're in relationship with those, with, with, with the organizers and the community members there, part of the community there, Part of the community there, um, uh, but we're not here to uh, so speak to speak on that behalf. That's why I'm here. I said, put the guns away. There's yeah, no yeah, need for, oh, oh, there's no need yes, for yes, um, yes. intimidation. They're not going to leave whether they have those guns out or not. Yeah, what right, you're going right, to have right. is a, a worse situation if they right. don't put those guns away. Right. You That's need right. to really yeah. command. She's asking about concessions for the crowd. Yeah, I was asking if that would be useful, and I'm hearing no. Yeah, I mean, this is Look what's happening. All of the area around the 4th Precinct has turned into a commons. Mm -hmm. We, as neighbors, right. need that space. It's common space for lots of different forms mm -hmm. of expression. And it is not a threat, it's actually a right. Mm -hmm. It's a right, and it's a process, a democratic process that actually helps things. It shouldn't be seen as an attack, it shouldn't be seen as a threat, it should be seen as something we should celebrate. And don't forget that space was community space. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's very, very telling that that, that, that right. was a black that empowerment was community the way. space that was taken right. away and turned into a police that's department. Right. Mm -hmm. if, if, if I think that as far as like asking, yeah. making ass of, of the protesters there, I, I think that, just my like, personal opinion, I think that that would be something that you guys would have, that, yep. like, not you guys, that you yep. would have to go down and yeah. personally. Mm -hmm. After the police um, have removed themselves, mm -hmm. um, or just going down. Yeah, yeah I think so if you went scene. down right now and just said, "I need you to leave," to the police, this is not working. What sort of symbolic right. message would that send for you to be with us? Otherwise, it's a coup. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about all those That's people saying right. that you're not doing your job or you're not really yeah. holding the police accountable. That's, that yeah. they're they're trying to be comfortable in their own skin right now. Betsy, you don't have nothing to prove to them. They don't support you anyway. Yeah. So Let it go. It does nothing to but ridicule you. That's right. It's, but it's an excuse to wear your jeans. I know you like to wear your jeans. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I've heard what you're asking for. Um, I will reflect back that you are asking for the police to stand down, um, to have there not be weapons. Is this right? Mm -hmm. um, there's a few other things about sort of the bigger picture about discipline and things like that, which at some other point, if you want to talk about that longer term stuff, I'm happy to do. Um, I just want to reflect back that I've heard that you are asking for those things. Yeah. Yes. Um, I am not going to, uh, uh, what I can do is make sure that, uh, that I can do what I, Uh, what I can do uh, is do my best to make sure that we are as good at actors as possible and that we are doing our best to create and preserve the space you need um, to be there on site. That is not what I'm trying to prevent, and that's not what the um, evacuation of domestic is about. I have heard what you're asking for. So, thank you. Thank you for being with us. Yeah, thank you, thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.